Hello everybody and welcome to Skip Allen Paints and the YouTube channel of Skip Allen. Okay, so if you follow my blog, you know that I announced, or sadly announced, that David Gell has decided to take down his website called Jitterbrush. And if you're familiar with David and Jitterbrush, you know that David is a master brush maker for Corel and has helped many of us learn how to use Corel and mentored us. I know he certainly has helped me over the years uh, through direct contact and also by taking his brushes and uh, deconstructing them. Sorry, I just hit the microphone. Um, so that I would learn how he made them. Anyway, when he decided to take down the site, he said to me that I could put up any of the brushes or um, other materials that he has provided over the years um, on my website uh, so that they would stay available for, uh, for uh, painter users. And so I'm delighted to do that. It'll take me a while to get it all up there. Uh, just to give you an idea, I'm going to come up here to the brush control, I mean to the uh, brush panel, brush library panel. And if you'll notice, I'm in a brush library called David Gel. And look at all of the categories that I've got here. And I have another library that has David's brushes in it. I have over 30 categories of brushes uh, from David. Plus, lots more stuff. I mean, I have some um, scripts that he has, like this Reset Paper Default, uh, which he had given me the uh, permission to post uh, earlier. But anyway, what I've decided to start with is a category called Tribal Beads and Weaves. Um, I decided to start here because these brushes are what I would call uh, specialty brushes. In other words, they're, it's not something you would use to paint a complete painting with, but it would be something that you would use uh, as, uh, you know, for a little special part. And these are all beads, uh, like jewelry, that you could add to uh, your work. I'm also using these or starting these because I thought it would be fun that if you would start deconstructing or really looking at how these brushes are made, it would give you an opportunity to begin really learning um, how to make brushes in Painter. So anyway, the first brush that I'm going to show here is called Beads 1 String Dab 1. <laughs> now David always has great names for his stuff. And uh, I have all the admiration for some of the names he comes up with because it can be difficult. But this one tells you that it's going to be beads. Uh, there's one string and it's based on dab one. So if I open up the advanced brush controls and I come down to the dab preview, I can see that there is a dab preview of... Um, an object of some sort. If we open up the general brush control panel, you'll see that the dab type is captured. So he captured this shape to make the brush. He's also using a stroke type of rake, which may or may not be necessary for this particular uh, brush, but that's what he's using. So if we look at rake, we can see that he's only using one of the sliders, uh, the brush scale, at about 83%. But what does the brush do? Well, if I just paint with it and I increase my pressure or decrease my pressure, you can see that what I'm getting is basically a string of pearls. And it can be small or large, you know, but you get this nice sort of string of pearls look. Okay, so, by the way, I am working on a separate layer. I, the canvas layer I have set up with a gradient just to give us a nice background. The color that I'm using is a sort of a creamy yellow. Okay, so that was beads one string dab, uh, one string dab one, and if we go to dab two, and let's open this back up, we'll see that we have a different kind of captured dab. And again, you can see 
the shape of the dab in here. Okay, if we go to the next one, dab three, we've got this little airplane propeller, it looks like, <laughs> right there at the front, but it's really a spacer in between the beads, see? Doesn't that look just like beads you've seen? Um, and if we go to the next one, which is dab four, you'll see that we have like a bone. So this would be a necklace made of bones. <laughs> Isn't that cool? I just think this stuff is so wonderful and incredibly creative of David. If we go down here, though, let's... Now, all of the... You, I'm not going to go over, over every one of these because you can play with them and see how they work. But I am going to come down to Tribal Weave 1. And if we look at Tribal we, re, Weave 1, we have Static Bristle being used. And this is the setup. And what you'd want to do is go in there and play with these sliders and just see what they do. Rake is set up a certain way and play with it and see what it does. This is not a captured dab. If we look at the general, we'll see that it's a static bristle. And the bristles look like they're just three or four or five or six little bristles that are different shaped. But look at how, what this looks like. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? I mean, how how does this stuff that we're seeing create this? And why do we get all these colors when I'm only selecting one color? Well, you'd have to look at color variability, and that would tell you why we're getting all these different colors. So let's look at another one of those. We'll go down to Tribal Weave 2. And look. Wow. <laughs> I just think these things are amazing. Uh, and this last one, I think, is really pretty. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Such a nice textured kind of stroke. Really, really pretty. Now, just... To give you an idea, let's uh, take that off, and what we'll do is we'll change the color to something a little more intense. How about that bright blue? Look at the difference there. And look, when I do a second brush stroke or a third, each time the brush stroke is a little different, the color wise. The same thing happens if you go up to the very top to these beaded uh, braid five strand. They're set up with color variability to be pretty uh, different. And so as you paint with them, you're going to get a diff really different color every time you paint, which can be kind of fun. Anyway, this is... Uh, David's tri Tribal Beads and Weaves. I want to show you one other thing since we're playing with stuff today. I thought maybe you might like to see a little bit of a demo that might be of interest to you. I'm going to go to, oops, I'm going to go to uh, a tool, a different tool, one that's a tool called the pen tool. Now, normally you would find the pen tool in your uh, toolbox, but I'm using a simplified toolbox, so the pen tool is not there. So I went to it and got it um, from another place. Now, in order to show, the pen tool is, is um, Gosh, I I'm, all of a sudden my mind is going blank to the type of work that you call a pen tool. I'll, it'll come to me in a minute. But if you come up to the property bar, you'll see that I have select stroke color selected, and I have a sort of a cream color selected. I'm going to make my image kind of small, and I'm doing that because I want to make a curved line that uh, I'm going to use as a path for my brush stroke. So I'm just going to make a dot and pick my stylus up, make another dot, but this time I'm going to keep the stylus connected 
to the tablet and I'm going to drag. So the higher I drag, the deeper it becomes and I can affect whether it's, you know, how it looks. Okay, now I'm going to bring that back up so that it's bigger. And I'm going to switch now from the pen tool to the brush. Okay, now let's look here. What's happened is I now have a shape layer because that's what I created was a shape. I'm going to get rid of that layer and add a layer above the shape layer. Okay, I'm back down to the beads. Uh, one string, dab one. I want to go back to that color that I kind of liked, uh, sort of a creamy gray color. Now, if I paint, I'm going to paint on the layer, and it doesn't matter how I paint, it's just going to go willy-nilly, right? But if I come up to the property bar and I click on not freehand strokes, not straight line strokes, but I click on align to path, that means that the brush stroke will align to the path. Now, see, nothing is happening over here. I have to be close to the path. So if I come over close to the path and see, it's going to just follow that path perfectly. So if I wanted to make a perfect row of pearls using uh, define uh, follow the path, this align the path would be the best way to go. And I could even go light pressure and then increase my pressure and decrease my pressure like that so that I could get kind of a graduated group of pearls. You could turn off or delete the shape layer and there you have your pearls all set for you. That's called Align to Path. Okay, that's it for this. Now, I want to remind you that you can download these brushes from my blog. They are free for you to use any way you see fit. The only restriction is, there, there are no restrictions to their use, but the only restriction is that you may not sell them, sell the, the brushes, nor share them with anybody else without my prior permission. Now, that's not the way I had originally uh, that's the way it was originally set up with David, except you had to have David's permission. So I'm doing the same thing that he, he did on the website. You may not sell them and you may not share them without uh, first getting prior approval. Okay, so I hope you enjoy these and be on the lookout. Over the next little while, I will start loading up all of David's stuff onto the site so that future Corel uh, painters, as well as us old geezers, will be able to uh, use his stuff. Incidentally, this particular um, set or category is set up to work with Painter 12.2 and later. So if you have 12.2, you have X3, you have 15, 2015, 2016, or 2017, These, this set will work with all of those versions of Corel Painter. All righty, that's it from me. I hope to see you at the blog very soon. Bye-bye.